Okay, guys, it is finally here. Please, 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 please accept my deepest apologies. But I'm sure, um, you know, with everything that's going on in the world today, you know, today's the first day back for the girls and hubby's just gone to work, which means I actually have the house to myself for the first time in a very long time. So let's crack on. So um, I've done a couple of previous posts before this to explain that I'm not going to guide you through specific colours. We're really going to have a bit of freedom with this. I think it'd be really, really nice to actually just do something a bit more expressionist and just something that you can have a bit of a go at. So if you um, transfer your line work in whatever preference you prefer, I haven't gridded this one out. So I've just done a simple line work for you to do the trace down and I'm just going to lighten up the pencil lines very quickly now and it doesn't matter what brand you use and it actually doesn't matter what color so hopefully you saw the previous post which gave you some color inspiration just to give you some ideas of the different color variations that you can do um, I'm just going to talk through very quickly few of the brands that I have with watercolour pencils as this was specifically asked for um, and has actually been asked for a few times before so at the moment I currently have in my stock the Derwent watercolour pencils I have a range of ink tents and I also have the Spectrum Noir Aqua Blends as well so i shall be using a variety of brands depending on the color and just remember that if you're using things like intense that the color won't shift around as easy once it's dry as a normal uh, watercolor pencil so really think about what ones you've got and what ones you are happy to use now originally i was thinking of actually doing all the black outlines with an alcohol marker just to save me some time and i am still tempted to do that because also it means then that the black doesn't run when we then go over with our colours and also means that it keeps it nice and dark for us. So I think that's probably my intention. Excuse all me for talking and uh, sorting out at the same time. So I think that's what I'm actually going to do. So I'm going to go around with the black pen first. This is entirely up to you whether you want to do it with paint or with pen but I, I think for me I'm going to do this with pen so there's no point in me talking through the whole thing I shall just crack on and get that done my kids had hold of this so it's in a bit of a mess at the moment she does like to help herself to my markers What I'll probably do, because there isn't really any um, any information or tips I can give you if this is what you're going to do, I am actually using marker paper because I did think to myself when I did this originally that I was going to do the black with the marker and because you don't need a huge amount of water with colour pencils, I decided that we were going to do it on smooth paper just to help me get a final finish that I was happy with. So you can use either watercolour or smooth paper, that is entirely up to you.
when we come to this feathery bit on his body what i'm going to do is use the end of my marker and you again you can do this with pencil if that's what you want to do but where my little one has just sort of <laughs> used my marker to death um it's almost got this sort of softness to it um so i thought i would use it for the marker but all i'm doing is starting from this bottom end and sweeping upwards to keep the pencil lines or pen lines quite thin don't put any pressure on the paper just literally let the nib of your pen touch the paper and then glide it up towards the um, center and then that way you'll get much finer lines on your work rather than having these intense thick lines because you don't want anything too um, wide with regards to getting the lines in so again you can do this with your pencils if you want it's just that while I had it in my hand and it was um, pretty good at getting the sort of motion that I wanted it to I thought I would use it while it's in my hand already So that's essentially the base down to the sort of how I wanted it and I'm going to leave the rest of the dotting until afterwards but I wanted to give you a bit of a sample of what I was doing so if you chose that you wanted to do it first that's absolutely fine. If you do please make sure that whatever you're doing for this does not reactivate with water. So alcohol markers are best if you've only got a sharpie it's not a problem use a sharpie. Um, and I'm going to use probably for the dotting the Spectrum Noir art liners because they work so well with watercolours um, and I've got a 5 and 8 and a 0.1 um, so now it's just a case of picking the colours that you want and hopefully you've had a look through the colour inspiration and I loved the combination that they had of this tealy blue with this red that was happening in the bottom and then sort of this punch of green. So the first thing really I'm going to do is pick out the colours I want for that tealy bluey greeny uh, variation of colour I suppose and yeah it's just a case of having a look and seeing what colors you want if you want to blend more than one or even do a rainbow please go ahead and do that have fun with this i want you guys to just use this tutorial as a bit of a freedom of expression i suppose um so the colors i'm going to use is aqua and lagoon for the main blue areas and all i'm going to do it's very gently with the lighter which for me is the aqua anywhere that there is blue I'm going to shade over the whole area you might struggle to see this through the camera let's see if I can zoom you in on that one wing it doesn't matter if it goes over where the alcohol marker is because once we apply water on the top it will wash that away a little bit and you can always put some more on top so I'm just going to color those areas in like I would be colouring in a colouring book. You want your pencil strokes to be fairly close together so when we come to activate it with water we don't have lots of pencil lines showing underneath. So pretty much the entirety of that top wing is blue but what I'm going to do is sort of do the, the left side and the right side so half and half in this lighter colour like so and I'm going to bring it a little bit into this section of the wing then I'm going to grab my darker colour which for me was the lagoon and I'm going to use the lagoon on the inner or the closest section to the body and again cover the whole lot fairly well
like so. So then when we come, I'm going to see if I can make it a little bit brighter. Then when we come to adding the water, I suggest a number four round brush. If you don't have a number four, a six will be fine, but I wouldn't really go any higher than a six. Make your brush nice and moist. Don't oversaturate, so have a bit of kitchen roll ready just to take off some excess water. And we're gonna start on the inside closest to the body and we're gonna brush over what we've put down. Now, um, the pencils will dry your brush out quicker than most of the other mediums you're probably used to using. So bear that in mind. And I'm just gonna sweep over the lighter color so we can get a nice natural blend happening. Just gonna moisten the brush again. But hopefully you should have enough down that you shouldn't see any pencil marks showing through. So then when we come over to the lighter area, we can just wash over. Again, just re-moisten the brush if you need to. Like so. If you want to use watercolour paper, that is absolutely fine, but just be aware that you will suffer a little bit with the texture when it comes to putting the alcohol marker down. Uh, you'll find that it will probably feather a lot more than you imagine it would do. So there's our sort of first level of base colour. It's probably quite tricky to see. And I think quite potentially, I am gonna have to go actually a bit darker. I can hear Erica screaming in shock and horror now. Um, but I'm going to continue with this on this other side. And we're going to work on it in layers just like we would any other watercolour or pencil drawing. So again, I'm going to fill the first half. I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit actually because I don't think it's done us any favours. And then we're going to get the light colour and then fill in the rest. So again, it doesn't matter what colours you have chosen, what matters is the order that you put them down. So the darkest towards the body, the lightest towards the edge of the wings. Don't be afraid to speed up the drying process with a hairdryer, just make sure it's on your lowest heat setting or if you've got a cool setting, use that. And then we're just gonna work again from the center or the middle even, closest to the body, and then we're gonna brush outwards. And we're just gonna meet them up so we can have a little bit of a blend in the middle there. Like so. And we're just gonna blend all that pencil out. Go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow that to dry while we then work on the bottom half. Now this is a little bit darker so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in with the darker of my blues which is the Lagoon and that is the blue that I'm going to use on this section for the moment and I will figure out whether or not I want to go darker as we build up from the red. So I'm just going to fill this area in And I'm gonna use a slightly different color for the body. I think I'd like the body to stand out a little bit more. And I think in the reference that I'm using, it's actually got a little bit of violet in that area. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. Avoiding this part because that's where our next color is going to go. So 
so again if you do want to do something completely different color wise please please do please have a bit of freedom with this one this is all about you learning how to use the tools rather than having the correct colors quite like the pastel feel that this color has but I certainly think down the camera it's um, not particularly bright for you guys and then we can just wash that and then while that is drying we can work on the lower part with the other color so for me I need a red and a green If you want to add extra detail in, we can with wax pencils at the end. There's no problems with doing that at all. Give that a nice sweep over. To say the pencils will soak up the water much quicker than a lot of other watercolor mediums so if you find that it's not spreading particularly well just add a tiny bit more water to your brush and that will help okay so the next color i'm going to grab is going to be for down here which is like a very deep red What have we got here? Let's go with that red, I think, which is a red berry. And if I need to, I will use the fig to darken it. But I'm going to use the fig on the aqua blends for the bits in here. And I am going to use it like we're drawing a normal picture. And I'm going to use it like a pencil and just gently pop it in the areas where I can see that colour. And just use it like I would a pencil because we still want to keep some of that fur detail so it doesn't matter if we still have some of those pencil strokes left over. And then we want to come in with a little bit of our blue as well towards the bottom and I didn't fill out the black unfortunately I forgot to do that so I'll do that in a second do that with my number five art liner and then I can get some details in and I'll just brush up from the bottom and that will give us some little highlights in there as well I mean all these little details are what you can sit and fiddle with once we've got the main base colors down He's got blue at the top of his head too. Let's get that in. There we go. Okay, so I've got the red. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the majority of the colour down here. And then on this third one up, I'm going to stop. And then I'm going to use the colour that's on my brush to fill the rest. And again here I'm just going to do a bit. I think I've missed a line here as well so let's pop that in. There we go. And then I need a green for the area in here. so and if you have a look there's a little bit of a red here but what we can do is if I show you we're going to turn the paper to make it a bit easier so we're going to activate that pencil get that nice rich color and we're just going to blend it up into that part of the wing and then that way we get a bit of shading without having to add and whatever is left on my brush I am then going to go in and add around the top area here we don't then have to add any more onto our brush. 
And again, we're going to start down here and brush up. Don't quite know what I've done there. I haven't quite finished that off. Let's do that a little bit wider that side just to match it in a bit better. brush that up and then again bring whatever excess pencil we have down into that area like so and then we just need to brush the green out make sure your brush is nice and clean you don't want any red left on there I'm just going to brush that up from the bottom I'm going to leave a little bit of white on mine okay so I'm just going to activate what is up here around the head and the body just to make sure that we have all that area done. Again, you don't want to oversaturate your brush, especially if you've done it on smooth paper because it will buckle the smooth paper much quicker than it will watercolour. And I'm literally just going to brush down like that. So I'm pushing nice and flat on my brush and it's more to just soften the brush strokes than it is to do anything else. And then he's given lots of nice bits of texture here that you can see. I'm going to brush up into the head with any excess paint I've got on and again that will just help soften everything together. Now is the point where you can sit and decide whether you want to make certain areas darker, which I think I will. I think he's a bit too on the pale side for my liking. So I'm going to grab directly off my pencil and that will give me a bit more intense colour. And so where I just want it to be a little bit more intense on the colour, I'm just going to take it straight off the pencil. Like if I want to make these a little bit more intense. It's so easy. Just be careful that you don't flick, especially if you're doing it over your work, because if you flick, that's where you end up with little... Um, splashes of colour so roll is the easiest way I find to take the colour off without worrying about the colour going everywhere you don't want it to go so I'm now going to use this just to really add some detail the brush I'm using by the way is just it's called round simply De La Rowney, and it's a brown handle brush which you can get from Hobbycraft and it's just a number six, but it has a beautiful point on the end, which means I can do quite a lot without having to change brushes over. So there, we've got a bit more intensity in that now. So we're just gonna repeat on the other side. in a little bit of extra where you want it to be there's no hard and fast rules I mean if you're looking at doing realism then yes you need to really look at where things are on your reference picture but the point of this tutorial is just to you know everyone's had a really stressful few months and I just want to help you sit and relax and just enjoy the process really okay so we've got some intensity there on the inside of the wing so we're going to do the same with the bottom re-wetting my brush because the pencil does dry it and then we're going to just do the, exactly the same down on the bottom wings just to intensify that colour I'm going to make it darker up the top here and keep it light down the bottom so where the wings meet is going to be where it's darkest and then we're just going to wash the colour out towards the bottom Then if you want to allow it just to dry for a few seconds or even a minute you can then go over the top again and again you can increase the intensity of the colour. So as with any medium that you do with me 
layering is pretty important to get the intensity of color because as we know watercolor has this, this transparency whether you're using ink based or pigment based dye based sorry or pigment based you still need to build up the intensity this is a much quicker way of doing it over wax pencils so it's a great way to get you started in learning how to layer and get the depth of color that you need So the bottom wings just qu aren't quite dry enough yet. Okay, so I am going to, I want a bit more of a tealy color on the end of my wings. So I'm gonna have a look and see what other options I have available. Let's test this jade green out. actually quite similar to what we've been using on the top in fact I'd say it's less green and more blue so let's see what ink tense colors we have I'm going to test the teal green on this one there that's that's nice so I'm going to go with this color okay so we're going to get this teal color I just want to intensify the colour a little bit more. So if you want to build up again with yours, please feel free to do the same. But if you maybe like yours a little bit more washed out, you might like yours a little bit more paler looking. Again, this is all down to personal preference. All I'm doing really is showing you how to use the tools. So I'm, I'm actually going to sweep that colour all over this area. Because... I really like the the green that's in here so I've got a much nicer blend between two let's just blend that out a little bit as it comes up like so and then we're going to do the same on this side. Now you probably can't see down the camera very well, um, but there is a difference between those two. And I'm going to do the same on this side. There we go. Let's bring that down bit more on there so if I tilt it slightly you'll get a much better view of what I'm looking at so I don't want to go too dark because I'd like it to look fairly natural so we're now gonna just a little bit here where the wings meet to intensify where they split like so and then I might do a little bit for me actually under this bit here and make that green a bit stronger too. There we go. So I'm just using it fairly dry off the brush, off the end of the pencil. And then, yeah, it just helps give us that, that bit of intensity. If you want to, you can add a bit of line in, but be careful that your paper is not too wet. If it's too wet, you will scratch the paper and it will start to eat up, especially if you're using smooth. So that's all we want. We want that intensity there to divide our wing sections up. And I personally think that I don't want to have much more in the way of colours or details because once we get the black details and dots on we're going to have even more information and details down so I mean that is pretty much it for the colour process I'm going to wash this red out a little bit so it's a bit less intense up the top here so get a, if yours is the same 
clean brush I'm just sweeping over the color to eliminate some of that color that's all I'm doing like so and then we've got a bit more of a gradient happening there now I'm going to allow this to dry and then I'll come back and it's a case of getting the dotting and then we can see what other extra details we want to add on to it. Okay, so how we come to draw these in, again, is entirely up to you. I am going to use black pen and as I say, I'm going to be using the art liner and I'm going to use a 0.5. The 0.5 is a nice average size end and the art liners, as I say, are water resistant. I apologise for the darkness of it, but it's the only way I seem to be able to get the colour detail to show up. So really have a look at your line work and then your reference picture and then we can just work on just gently drawing in the leg detail mine is still a little bit damp if it's on standard paper it tends to take a bit longer to dry so just bear that in mind and then it is a case of us just sitting here and drawing in the details now if you were doing this more of a realism piece for a a commission or something like that you'd be doing this with black pencil or whatever pencil it is that you're working with at the time so it really is just a case of you know checking all the little hairs getting those in you can swap to a thinner pen if you want to Again, I want you to make this tutorial your own. I really want you to just have fun and go with the flow. These pencils do make very good underlayers if you need to do larger portraits but are limited on time. So I'm just adding all the little fine details in. you little hair details little floofy body I am going to swap to a one just to do around the body here now it is a case of painstakingly um, if you want to go over your lines again with your marker feel free and it will strengthen the blackness of the lines but if you're happy with the subtleness of it now you've gone over it that's absolutely fine too this is really up to you so if I show you so this is before I redo the lines And this is after I do the lines so it's really down to what you prefer the look of you might like the look of it being a lot more soft it's almost got like a powdery look to it um, but for me I prefer to have a more solid black so certain areas I am just going to go over and redo If you want a more intense tutorial around working with watercolour pencils that is absolutely fine we can do that but I think it was important for you to have this 
introduction to them to at least get you familiar with how they're going to work and and how they perform as you're using them and just getting you used to how they might look when you're working in a watercolor format because they're not always as pigmented as colored pencils are that just strengthens some of the black areas that we have done and then it is an arduous task of dotting so you can either do this just to match it up I am going to do this side with the tip of my alcohol marker just so it matches the other side because I don't want any major inconsistencies Okay, so on the little bottom bit here on the image there's some little dots of green that come up so i'm just going to place that i don't know how well this is going to show up on camera i'm just going to put put a few little green dots in place where i can see it a little bit of green up here so again i'm just gonna bring that up with the pencil and then i've got a number eight so let's get dotting. They've got the little dots down in between these ones on the ends here. So I'm just adding that in. You don't want to go too mad, but there is quite a few in our reference photo, but I'm going to let you decide how many you want to add in because you are going to be here for a little while but it is pretty therapeutic. So I am gonna put some nice relaxing music on for you and uh, we can sit and chill together.
so and there's not really a lot down the bottom end of his wing so I'm just going to just do some very tiny subtle ones where the edge of that colour is that's it because there's not a lot down there at all it's all pretty fairly clean so that's probably all I'm going to do on those bottom ones very very few Let's do the rest of the veining on this one and then I'll do the white to show you. A few dots out here. Put a few by the fluffy section as well. And then we need to dot the line that joins up here. many but we want to put a few dots up there okay so let's just go ahead with the white so I can show you how that's going to look I'm going to do lots of white on these bottom wings but I want to do enough that it just matches in with the top but doesn't distract too much. Just a couple of highlights on his little furry body there. is sort of the, the premise I think of what well it will be it'll be what we do on the other side and we don't want to do too much I think that's enough so if we zoom out you'll see that that left side is pretty much complete and it's looking really really lovely so all we need to do is repeat on the other side Okay, I'm just going to refine any final details I want to refine on the body shape and just get some more depth in there. It is really difficult because, I, as I say, I don't know why, but you're getting a lot of reflection. Let's turn that off and see. There we go. That gives you a bit of a better idea. Um, so it's just a case of really refining now, altering any details if you want to. I'm pretty happy with how mine has come out. I'm just trying to level up the sides here a little bit. Just to get them a little bit more equal. And I think we are just about done. So the only thing you have left to do is sign it. If you want to do some fancy shadow underneath, you certainly can. But I did mention a little while ago that we were going to alter some of the tutorials that we did, make them a bit more freer so you can just enjoy something a little bit different each month instead of it always being these intense realism drawing techniques so hopefully you've enjoyed this one don't forget to come and share on the patreon tutorial and tag me if you post on any social so i can come and have a look 
and yeah that's pretty much it for this video so i can't wait to see what you guys come up with have fun and i'll see you in the next one bye